Okay, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. How are you doing? How's everybody? Obviously, we've got a lot of people missing tonight, but that doesn't, the main thing is we're here and the Lord's here with us, so Amen. praise the Lord. It's like the Johnny Cash song, right? I've been everywhere. Well, I had a successful day, too. I got the Christmas lights up. I had, a, I had a successful day. I got the Christmas lights up. So it's not, I don't have to do it when it's 40 below zero. So we got that accomplished. Well, praise the Lord. God's good. Appreciate you that are here. And uh, anybody have any prayer requests? That's good news. We do want to have prayer for uh, Ron. Uh, he had a tooth removed today. And he's, got, he's dealing with some side effects from that. And uh, Tim also uh, let uh, Mike know that Leah's having some issues, and so uh, we want to pray for her and and uh, just lift them up. Believe God for healing and in that situation. Anybody else? Yeah, Mike. Uh, can Cindy lift it up? I'm still bleeding yeah, on her heel. Just broke out. I'm gonna bring back a bomb. I'm sorry. My kids said it broke out, and that they had a mother. Let's. Let's just ask the Lord to move on them and remind them that mom's still around and she needs to be she needs to be in touch with her kids every once in a while. Amen. God can do that. Got the same issue. Sometimes it happens. So let's just believe God for these things. And uh, he's the only one that can fix it all anyway. So we'll Amen. just trust him to do it, right? Amen. Yeah. Any other needs? Any uh, testimonies? Any, anybody want to say something good about what God's doing for them? Yeah, Mike. I woke up this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> this side of the sod, it's a good thing. <laughs> the Lord's with us. Praise God. So Amen. just say, uh, you know, we've got all this stuff with politicians and all the craziness that's going on with that. But, I, you know, there's still hope. <clears throat> I was just reading something the other day. You know, jellyfish have existed for millions of years with no brain. They have no brain whatsoever. So there's still hope for politicians. Praise the Lord. Don't give up. Amen. Jellyfish have managed to last this long while. There's still hope for them too. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, let's just move right on into this then. That's been a long time since I've done this part of the service, so I'll have to be reminded. Soup dinner this Sunday. Looks like we're going to have a lot, of, a lot of good soups, and it's going to be a great weekend for it because the temperatures are supposed to drop. Friday and then be even cooler on Saturday and Sunday so weather will be good soup weather and we can enjoy that time eating soup and spending a little extra time with one another amen, amen. amen. all right let's just get right into the word then will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you praise God I'm a believer and these signs do follow me in the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Praise God. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ, every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I, any malfunction in this body, in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that's formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now what do we do? Praise the Lord. Offering. Offering. Okay, James, would you like to take up the offering for us tonight? That would be great. Right here. 
you want to pray or would you rather I did, James? We'd love to have you do it, if you would. Amen. Thank you, James. Appreciate it. All right, why don't we just go to the Lord in prayer now for these needs. We know Tim, Leah, Cindy, Ron, Brian. James, I know he's had some issues here that he's doing better with them now, but let's just believe God for all of these needs to be met. So, Father, we just bring these before you right now. You told us to cast every care upon you because you care for us. So we release our anxiety, our stress, our, our worries, and just say, Lord, it is finished. By your stripes, they were healed. And we claim that healing promise right now in the name that is above every name, the name that's above lung disease and, and uh, the the name that's above diabetes and the name that's above every sickness and every disease and every attack of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing, yes, deliverance, breakthrough in every area. Father, we just release our faith right now for the supernatural power of God Almighty to work in their lives. There's no distance, amen, in prayer. So we know, Lord, that it's as if we were laying, laying hands on them right now. You are in their midst. You are right there with them. And we believe, Lord, for supernatural move of God in each one of their lives tonight. Let them, let them experience your presence, your healing and your power, your love and your grace in Jesus' name. And we'll give you all the thanks for it, for you alone are worthy. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Let's Hallelujah worship the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, Lord.
is a lot of pain.
Praise God. Praise God. Let's lift our hands and love the Lord right now. Father, we just thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for being everything to us. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are the first and the last and everything in between. And we give you praise tonight for all of your goodness, for all of your grace that you have extended to us, for every blessing that we receive. And we praise you for it tonight. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Mike and James. As always, praise the Lord. Whether few or many. Amen. Praise God. Praise the, God. If the Lord is on our side... Who can be against us? Praise the Lord. So can I, baby, and it's coming back to me right now. A lot of, a lot of times I did that. When we first, the first church we started, I preached to my wife and our little girl, and sometimes the neighbor kid. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Yeah, it's all the same. Praise God. Whether few or many. Praise God. I've never uh, made a distinction in 
seeking the Lord for a message or finding the will of God for any particular service. I just, whether there were going to be one person there or a hundred or a thousand. Amen. Praise God. Got to believe that God's got something to say to somebody, even if it's just me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's start tonight. I want to, I want to read from Habakkuk chapter two, verses one through four. It's kind of, I was kind of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, inspired by a little bit by what Suzanne was saying Sunday morning about it's all about Jesus, and, and it certainly is. This whole Bible is about Jesus. Everything that we do really is about Jesus. So I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to go tonight. That's what I'm going to try to get to at some point here. But as usual, I'll take a roundabout way of getting there probably. So I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Praise God. All right, Mark chapter 4 and verse 11. Mark 4 and 11. He said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. And then verse 30 and 31 of the same chapter here, Mark 4, 30 and 31. So he said, tells us back there, he tells us the kingdom, it's a mystery, this kingdom. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or what, with what comparison shall we compare it? It's like the grain of a mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. And you remember another time Jesus told his disciples, he said, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, and it, and it will depart. Amen. So the mystery of the kingdom is faith. And I've said, uh, I think uh, the last time I preached uh, a week ago last Sunday or whenever it was, I said that a key element of mystery is that the little we know draws us deeper into what remains unknown. That's the whole reason for mystery, mystery novels, mysteries of any kind. It's what little we know takes us deeper into the amount that we don't know. Ever heard the expression, you can't see, can't see the forest for the trees? Yeah. Well, faith is like a forest. You know, we see the, the trees, but the deeper you go, the more you see standing back from a forest, you just see a tree line, right? But the deeper you get into it, the more you begin to see. You stand outside the forest, you see this dark wall of trees, and the further into the forest that you go, you start seeing clearings, and then maybe a little stream over here. You'll see birds and animals and trails, and the more you experience the forest, the more mysterious it becomes. First, you see a little and then more, and then more, but you never see the whole of it. That's right. You can only see where you're at in the forest, right? right. In, in forests, you know, what, what we discover is it raises our awareness and our appreciation of what we don't know. You know, we're more likely to hike further into the forest and explore the deeper parts of the forest once we know some paths into it. The attraction to mystery grows as we penetrate the mystery more deeply, right? Just like when you first come to know the Lord. It's, it's, it's all a mystery, but you only know what little bit you know, and there's a, an abundance of what you don't know, right? And that's what draws you deeper into the relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about God's mystery, where God is concerned, what we don't know far out out, it exceeds what we do know. No matter how much we know of God, there's way more to know. So the more we know about him, the more we realize we don't know. Right. 
if that makes sense. Praise the Lord. See, God is still a mystery, even as he reveals himself, because it's as a mystery that he is revealed. Yes. Look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. You know, sometimes in Christianity, religion especially, it's wanting to know everything. And in fact, many times profess to know everything. Mm. But the truth is, God's a mystery, and it's in a mystery that he is revealed. So to say that you have all the answers is to be ignorant. Mm -hmm. For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them that lay to see it, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, if that's not a mystery, if that isn't telling you that this is a mystery, I don't know English, right? right? So Christianity isn't ignorance. It's not just not knowing. It's the knowing what we don't know and calling that mystery by its right name, God. Mm -hmm. The deeper into knowing this mysterious God, we find that when we think we have it nailed down, we say, God is this, you know? Well, then we have to say, but God's also that. Mm -hmm. God is transcendent, but he's also imminent. Yes. God is sovereign, but he also creates humans in his image with genuine freedom yes. to do what we want to do. Yes, sir. I mean, he's sovereign. He's the king. He's the Lord. He's the God. But... So you can say, you know, he's all-powerful, he can do anything, but then he creates us with this free will to do whatever we want to do. I mean, that's a contradiction, isn't it? It's a mystery. God is perfect love, but he's also perfectly just. And that's hard to, hard to, uh, to fit those two together sometimes because you would think he's perfect love, that means he's just going to, you know, forget about it rules and justice and so on and so forth. He's going to love. But he's perfectly just in the way he does everything. And yet he's perfect love. Think about this. A lot of times we live not far from the river. So a lot of times going home at night, uh, especially right at the end of summer and going into the fall, there's always a lot of fog. And you drive into fog and you, your headlights, you know, they, they extend your range of vision, and they illuminate things you couldn't see before. But at the same time, you realize there's a huge obscure background that your eyes can't penetrate. Have you, no you noticed that when you're driving, right? You can see clearly what's right in front of you, but when you look beyond, then you see you can't see nothing back there because it's just like a wall. The fog is just impenetrable. You can't see past it, right? So God is mysterious. He is a mystery. And knowing God means growing in both knowledge and at the same time conscious ignorance. And that's what I'm talking about. The fog is like, okay, I know what I can see, but what I can see also tells me there's so much more that I can't see. Mm -hmm. Right? I can see what's right in front of me, but the fact that there's fog there tells me there's all kinds of stuff beyond that that I, I can't see. So it's a willingness, it's an understanding that we have knowledge, but we also have a knowledge of our ignorance. Right. An awareness of what we don't know. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Sometimes people get all uptight and nervous because they don't think they have all the answers. Well, join the human race. You know, I mean, we just don't. God reveals them to us as we pursue him, as we seek him. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are not seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, or the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. <laughs> well, that'll give you a headache right there if you think about it for a while. But that's the way God operates. We don't see God. God's invisible. Right? And yet he, because of that, based on this very scripture, tells us he's more real than anything we do see. Yes. 
He's eternal. And the stuff that we do see is all fleeting. It's here and it's gone. You know, it's, it's, it's just for a short time. So it's been said that the gospel, Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ, right? It said it, it's, it's shallow enough for babies to wade in and never drown. Jesus said, let the children come unto me, right? Mm -hmm. And yet it's deep enough for scholars to swim in and never touch the bottom. Right. Same gospel. Same God. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1 through 5, talks about this very thing in a different way. It uses, it uses water as a, as a metaphor instead of the fog and the trees that I'm talking about here. But Ezekiel 47, 1 through 5. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle and speak a parable unto the house of Israel. He said, Lord, a great eagle and great wing. No, this is not it, Mike. 47? 47. It's the water flows out from the throne and right. deeper and deeper. Afterward, he brought again unto the door of the house, and the waters issued out from under the threshold of the house, eastward of where the forefront of the house stood. Toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way, the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters under the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand, and brought me through the waters, the waters were to the knees. And again he measured a thousand, and brought me through the waters, the waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Praise the Lord. Now look at John chapter 1, verse 18. Yes. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Right? Amen. All right. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 2 and 3 again. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, unto all the riches of full assurance of the understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the mystery, the mystery in the end, is Christ himself. Not only as he's revealed on the cross through the crucifixion and resurrection and so forth, but also as including us within him. Mm -hmm. So we were in him before the foundation of the world from eternity past. Amen. And because of that, the whole plan for us in him. Yes. Amen. Am I interrupting anybody? Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Even the mystery which has been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. So what does he say? The mystery is what? Made known, right? Yes. All right, look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9. Still talking about the mystery. Ephesians 1, verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. So he's made the mystery plain. Mm -hmm. All right, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So now the mystery is a revelation. Right? The revelation of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? So he tells us this it's revealed. He tells us how it's revealed. It comes by revelation. And how, how's the revelation? The revelation is Jesus Christ, the revelation of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? So the mystery of Christ 
has two sides. On one hand, it's completely beyond the grasp of human wisdom. It's a mystery. This mysterious wisdom of God is prepared before the world began. Mm -hmm. It was concealed through the ages until its time for revelation came. Amen. All right? Now, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask to think according to the power that worketh in us. And I'm getting to the, to the gist of this here, okay? So this is the other hand. On the other hand, the mystery of God that Paul's teaching us, it stimulates the will. It, it's exploring the mystery is probably then the greatest adventure. It's a mystery that we inhabit. Right. Not just stand before it and ask questions about it, but we actually inhabit the mystery. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, the forest grabs our attention, right? right? And most people are content with what they already know. Right. A tree line, waters to wade in. But go back to Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 again. And I'll wrap up with this. I will stand upon my watch, set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Still talking about this revelation, right? And not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So, I'm glad for what I you know, know and, and, and where I've exercised my faith in knowing. But I, we, can still explore the mysterious territory near where we live. Mm -hmm. T.S. Eliot wrote this little essay on Little Gidding, it's called. And here's what he said. We shall not cease from exploration. And the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. We're born again. Amen. It starts here. Yeah. It ends here. Yeah. Christ in you. Yeah. The hope of glory. Yeah. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Give him a hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. When we say things like that, go in the Lord. That's not just semantics. You can't go any other way. You can't go without him, and he can't go without you. We're one. We're on a great exploration, a great mystery to be discovered. And it's right where we started. And when we come full circle, we end back where we started, only to realize now we know. The first place we left was the place we were always looking for. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. God bless all of you. Yeah. Have a great rest of the week. See you back here Sunday. Bring your, bring your appetite Amen. and a straw if you need. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs>